I'm Kirsty. And I'm Dieter. And welcome to Winsome Loosemore, a YouTube channel about the hobby of board games. Welcome to November. Now, in these videos, we look back on the month before, in this case, October 2018, and tell you a little bit about what we got up to, the kind of games that we played, if we got any new games, the things that we're looking forward to, generally just updating you on our lives, on our lives and <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> Now, yeah, yeah, it's been quite a busy month. It has it? been a busy month. Yeah, we went to <laughs> yeah. Canada. Yeah. We've been to Canada this yeah, month. My nice. sister got married out there. Mm -hmm. So we took a trip <laughs> and we took games with us. But whilst we were out there, we also bought some games. But before that, before that, Hold before up. that, at the, the end of the last video, mm. uh, we said there are a couple of games coming, didn't we? Mm. And they've now arrived. What are they, Dieter? I'm just a bit worried, is all. <laughs> um, what was by you? First game. What is it? Sola Fide. Sola Fide. It's this, this is the religious one, isn't it? If you, if you follow us on Facebook, you'll have, you may have seen a video immediately after we played it the first time. Um, it is based on the Reformation um, with Martin Luther against the Catholics. Yep. I don't really know much history. Um, like Highlander. And so you play it from, you play it from things. So I'm I was the Catholic. I were the Catholics. I were the Catholics. <laughs> and he were sorry, I've got a sweet mouth. He were the Protestants. And it the teaches won. good grammar. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, uh, territory. Control area majority type thing. A little push and pull on different locations to try and win the most amount of popularity, favor. I don't know what it is, but the most converts, I suppose, mm. in an area. And then at the end, you look at all of Europe and see who's who's won the most, and the Catholics won. Yes, they which do. is not what history did. Yeah, but um, there's a nice little aspect to it which I enjoyed, which is. As much as you're playing, so I was playing the Catholics, Dieter was playing the Protestants, so I was kind of wanting the Catholics to convert, you also, there's an aspect of it where you bet on who's going to have the favour within the territory. That, this will make sense if you know, know the game. Do you mean the nobles and the commons? <laughs> it doesn't make sense if you know the game. Yes. Fine. So not specifically... Yes my people versus your people but within the region there's the nobility side and the commoners side and sorry the... yes right sorry that's what that's what i mean so i can't really remember it so i'm just we did play this right at the beginning of the month it's a long we? time ago it's been it? a busy month busy and we've month. played a lot of games yeah um so yeah that was solid fide Solar by fide. stronghold games stronghold so we also <laughs> sorry um we we taught Parks on the city to your parents. We did. We did. They enjoyed it. Yes. They were very tired, both of them. Yes. My dad fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We didn't play a complete game. We played two of the three rounds, but it gave them a good flavour of it. They'd want to play again. That's mm -hmm. good. Uh, we also, what did we teach? Uh, we taught a friend of ours Concordia, which is one of my favourite games. Um, so we got to play that in three player. Mm. That was fun. Oh yeah. Uh, revisited some old favourites. Century Spice Road is an old favourite. Pulled that one out. Yeah, we've not played that in a long time, but it is one of our no, top games. The next new one then, I suppose, is... Hannah Koji. Oh, she got it right. Good. Um, yes. The most intense 10 minute two player card game we have ever played. About prostitutes. No, it's not about prostitutes. <laughs> this is not about prostitutes. <laughs> if you think it's about prostitutes, get some culture. It's about geishas. Yes. Who aren't prostitutes? So I, I really enjoy... Prostitutes. No. Short games. I like snappy games yep. that are, you can get really involved in, lots of strategy, but it's over in 10-15 minutes. Um, and this is one of those games, and in fact this is one of those games that once you've done, you kind of want to play again immediately. Mm. So we've, I think every time we've played, we've played like two or three games in yes. a sitting. 
Um, but it gets more and more stressful. It's like playing Fuse multiple times. Yes. It's it's very clever. You only get four actions per round. You might only play one round because someone may have won in that time. But it's knowing when to use them, how to use them. There's a couple of uh, what's called I Split You Choose actions where I pick four of my cards and then Kirsty gets to choose two of them to keep and forces me to have the other two. So I'm having to choose what to sacrifice to try and stack the choice so that she'll take what I want her to take so I'm left with what I want because we don't quite know everything that's going on. It's good. It's great. It's it good. is It is only a two-player game. Yep. So we we enjoy two players because mm -hmm. there are only two of us, but if you often play games in four or fives, this isn't made for that. So. Yeah. Um, but if you if you play games as a couple or in pairs, just it's great. Give it a go. Yes. Um, oh, one of us played Friday apparently. So I'm looking at the list of the games that we played. Probably me. Yeah, not I. No, not I. I finally beat the solo mode of Spirits of the Forest game we were talking about last time, uh, and we also taught that to your dad as well. And yes, you know our comment in a previous video was that it was it just felt like it should be a two player game. I don't know. I. I think I had an equal experience in three player as I did in two player. Yeah, I think so as well. It kind of works equally as well, yeah. Mm. And then, as Kirsty said, we went to Canada a couple of weeks ago. Canada! That's what they call it out there. It's not. Um, and we taught some games. We taught Bang the Dice game to the family we were staying with. You may have seen them. If you, again, if you're watching our Facebook videos, this was Ian and Jen yeah. um, from um, Canada. Hi, Ian and um, Jen. <laughs> and Marcus. Yes. We also taught love letter to your parents. Obviously, it was her sister's wedding, so we spent the week with your parents and other people as well. So we taught them, yes, love letter, bang dice game they played before, Spirits of the Forest. Well, they played the card game. The what, the what card game? Bang the card game. We've never had the card game. No, that's what they played before. They've never played the dice game. Who are we talking about now? I said your parents. We've oh, played, yeah, they've sorry. played that before. Sorry. But yes, when we talk about the dice game, <laughs> they played the card game, the people that we stayed with, yes? Is that yes. what you're talking about? Ian Jen and Ian Marcus. Jen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Made you. Yeah. So we played Cluedo. Oh, we did. We did. We played Cluedo. Did we you played, enjoy it? We played. We, <laughs> we played. Moving on. I won. Uh, we played Sushi Go, which is the original, yes. smaller version. And I think it was, for me, the first time that we played that with... Oh, I played it with a child. And Sushi Go. She, Sushi Go. All right. And she was nine, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it really kind of pointed out to me how kind of accessible it is to any age group. Yeah. Like, we've, it, you can play it with adults and it's, it's great. There's a lot involved. But then it's easy enough to play with kids, yeah. um, and she loved it, didn't she? Mm. I mean, it was her game, <laughs> um, yeah. but she really loved it. So there's definitely a family. If you if you like to play games as a family, I would mm. definitely recommend Sushi Go. It's got a really just fun theme, and it's yeah. and it's the cool. basic game. There's Sushi Go Party, which gives you loads more, which gamers are more likely to buy because it gives you much more variability. Um, but just the base Sushi Go is like. 12, 15 quid, it's, yeah. it's really worth the money. Yeah. Um, we got taught cockroach poker by our hosts. Um, hi Ian. <laughs> <laughs> you do, hi Jen. I do. Hi Marcus. Hi, <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't like, well, you weren't very good at cockroach poker, were you? I wasn't very good, I did enjoy it though. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I misspoke. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't was particularly good at it. And I, yeah, I, I, didn't bluff particularly well. No. I think I have quite a good poker face. But... It, it helped that Ian and I seemed to subconsciously just plot against everybody else. So we would, we we understood what we were doing a little bit better because we sort of gamed up on people. So to give you a bit of a understanding of what cockroach poker is, it oh, yes. is essentially a very simplified version of poker. Very simplified. Um, so that it's accessible for children. And is that right? How is it a simplification of poker? Well, I don't, I, I've never really played poker. <laughs> <laughs> so I assumed it was a simplified. Because it's bluffing. Yeah. Um, it's just a very simple card game where you're bluffing about what you've got in your hand. 
and um, mm. and because it's cockroaches, little boys like that sort of thing, don't they? Beetles and things. Oh, the voice of the informed. Um, and then <laughs> one, of the, I mean. <laughs> one of the days we went into the city, which was like an hour and a half away, because we were in the middle of nowhere. Highway, <laughs> <laughs> and we found a game shop, really good game shop. Uh, there was a couple of them in the city, but we found uh, one that was made us want to move to Canada. Yeah, it did though. Massive selection, really exciting. I had to do a lot of maths to see what was worth it, and within our holiday budget, I was allowed to get a couple of games, small games, but we did get a couple of games. Let's let's first the Fox in the Forest, <laughs> another two-player game. Um, you'd never played trick-taking games no. before. No, so the first time we played this... <laughs> I just assumed she knew what I was talking about. I didn't have a clue. And so we were we were playing two-player. Oh, yes. Oh, and, yeah. um, and I was just clueless as what I was doing. I was just guessing cards down. I'm not, I didn't know what was going to come next. Really didn't understand what was going on. And then Marcus... Hi, Marcus. Um... Who is 11, is he? 10? 10, I think. 11. Sorry, Marcus. Maybe 11. He came in behind me and immediately, I've never, never seen this game before, yeah. understood what was going on and what I should be doing and how to trump and... <laughs> we don't need help. <laughs> no, how to um, use a trump card and stuff. Yes. And I... I was amazed, but it turns out he's very familiar with trick-taking games. Trick games, and I just didn't know this concept. So the concept of a trick-taking game, for those that don't know, is everybody plays one card, and the highest card wins. But then every Why game not? has rules that break that. So in hearts, hearts are trump suit. Uh, but then there's the rules, do you want to get... Uh, some tricks, do you want to get all the tricks, do you want to get none of the tricks? This one, because it's only it's a two cool, player, one person plays a card, the other person plays a card. It's as simple yeah. as that, whoever has the highest card wins. If you don't have the suit that's been played, then you can play one of the other two suits, and you might play the trump suit, which means you automatically win. But then half of the cards have special powers, are you looking for the game? Yeah. Oh, okay. doesn't matter. Um, I'll do a video on this soon. Oh, I want to show you. No, she's up, sit down. <laughs> So. Half, of the game, <laughs> half the cards have powers on, which allow you to affect that. Um, I'll do a video. Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's got a nice little twist to it. Yes, the scoring. Yeah. That's what I want to show them, the scoring. Well, you can say it. The scoring is a nice little twist. <laughs> I said it. Move on. Fantasy Realms. So this was the first of the two games we played. This is... Um... No idea. It's not the back of the box. Uh, three to six players, I think, but there's a two-player variant. So this is a hand-building, combo-building, rummy-style game where you pick up a card and then you get rid of a card because you're trying to build the best hand of cards. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Initially, we played it with uh, Ian, one of our... with our hosts. Um, <laughs> and then we really enjoyed it. I'd sat down and figured it out myself. Um, and then we'd all played it as a three. And then the next day, we played it with Ian and Jen. Jen, um, and really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Very clever. Um, it won't appeal to everybody, and I get that because. Uh, it's generic fantasy theme, but the way there's like 10 different suits that could all combo in different ways. There are thematic oh. links with how it works. There's only five in each suit. I like these updates. It reminds me of what of these games because I don't remember what they are. This is my life. Um, it's very good. I remember that. enjoying it. Yes, we did. Really and both times, it. the scores can be in the hundreds, but both times I lost by seven points exactly, most upsetting. Video on Facebook, um, check that one out. Anything else that we played this month? I think love letters. Covers it. I said that, we taught your parents love letter. Yes, I just want to say... Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Go back to love letter. It's such a good game just to have in your pocket. We call it lady pocket. Um, That's the game. It, it's it can be so quick like if we were, we spent a lot of time in airports and just sat around with my parents mm. and it's sort of thing like should we have another round of love letter just quickly want if you play with people who know what they're doing you should boom 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 mm. boom boom you're out you're out 
new one and it's it, that's great and I think I think I didn't appreciate how quick and just yes easy the context we've played it in before is when we've sat down to play games yeah and mm. it's like oh well, that was fine but when it's a uh, yeah because it's no it's no board game like it's not, it's not a strategy game. there's not a lot involved but if you're kind of like, oh, we're bored and we've got 10 minutes. Great. Just crack out a game of Love Letter. It is not bad at all. So what's coming up? What are you looking forward to? So, um, we are getting Pandemic, the 10th anniversary edition. Because we're suckers. And the main reason we're getting it is because it comes in a tin. So, Not just a tin though. It's beautiful. It looks like a med pack. Yeah, it can. I'm, I can't wait to show you guys. It's gonna be gorgeous. I'm just gonna have it on display. We probably won't play it. It's just there to look good. We yes, we we, we have we have done what is basically the least advisable thing, and pre-spent Christmas money we have not received yet. Kind of knowing we're gonna get the money. Don't. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Only spend money you have. <laughs> Otherwise, you're in debt. <laughs> um, we should just name the show "What Not to Do." <laughs> um, yeah, so so it's a it's in a first aid kind of medical kit thing. It looks brilliant. Uh, it, yeah, that's but that's what I'm game. that's what I'm looking forward to, so that I can display it on my wall. On our wall, sorry, we share the wall. Um, yeah. yeah, what are you looking forward to? Uh, Keyforge has a release date. Yes, it does. My turn to raise my arms. In two weeks, less than two weeks, it gets dispatched and should arrive, and I will have such fun forever. Uh, also, Until the next thing comes up. <laughs> um, the River should be coming in the next couple of weeks my as well. Mind me what the River is. Uh, a worker placement. Days of Wonder, the people that do Ticket to Ride okay. and all those beautiful games. They're always beautiful if you like the game or not. They just look great. Mm -hmm. um, and their most recent one looks good. Two to four player, worker placement type thing. You're building a settlement around a river by the looks mm -hmm. of it. It looks, it looks good, it looks fine, and it was cheapish. Um, cheapish, cheapish. Mm -hmm. um, so that's coming... That's probably it for now, mm. that we haven't mentioned. What would you like to play this month? Before we get on to that, can Ooh. I just mention something we Ooh. have played? I know it's going back to a different section. Um, it's very different for us, because it's a kids game. It is um, animal, animal Upon Animal. Oh, yeah. We bought this for our niece for her birthday. Yes. And we got to play this. It's little wooden animals that you're stacking on top of each other, but equally, equally. Also, you're playing cards. Is it cards? There's no cards. Dice. There's one die. There's a die. Um, so you're rolling a die, which means that that kind of, it's got certain actions on it that forces someone else to place mm. one of the animals in a certain place or whatever. And it's, for a kid's game, really good. Again, just, I think it like introduces them to Strategy. Not a lot of strategy in it. I take that back. There's not a lot of strategy. Um, There's the potential for developing critical thinking in where do I place this that's going to be most effective because it's a dexterity game essentially. You've got to balance it yeah. as you build it up. So yeah, there's, there's some level for that. Um, but is? then it just it just adds another dimension to the this is just balancing monkeys or something. Mm -hmm. What's that game? With the monkeys? Baron and Monkeys. Baron and Monkeys. It's not the same thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that because, mm. again, if you've got children and you don't, obviously, a lot of the games we mention aren't made for children no. and they wouldn't understand it. But what age was this from? It's quite a young age, Five isn't it? Five plus. Five plus. So, and, and that's accurate. Like, I think a five year old well, yeah. would be fine. We played it with a six year old and she was absolutely fine. So, yeah, if you if you want to have a look at that, check out Animal Upon Animal. Cool. Sorry, we'll carry on with what was the what? What do you want to play? What was coming up? This oh, month? What okay. Do you want to play? This month, I want to play. 
Hmm, good question. I should have thought about this. Pecunia Nomale. The poo game. The poo game. That's a lot of fun because there's poo involved. <laughs> <laughs> and we've only played it once, haven't we? Maybe twice. A couple of times. Oh, that's why we played Friday. I did a playthrough video. Because we said last time that we'd look at doing a playthrough video, mm -hmm. we suggested Fuse, we didn't get round to that because Friday's just a one player game, I cracked one of those out. But we will look at trying to do another of these playthrough games, maybe do Fuse, like we said, so watch out for that. We never played, well we didn't play any of the things that we said we wanted to play because we got new games. Yeah, that's what happens. But I think I'd quite like to play Magic Maze again, we haven't played that in quite a while. Um, and kind of build up the Yeah, we never really finished all the scenarios. No, so I might, okay. I might check out my video on it. Um, and I guess what we'll be doing, I don't know whether we'll be doing this before, are we going to be doing a video before Christmas? One of these? Yeah. Yeah. Alright then. Beginning of December. I will talk about what I want to do over Christmas on that video then. Um, that's it for cool. me. What about you? <laughs> We still haven't done Instagram, we'll figure that one out. Oh yeah, I was going to do that today actually, oh. this morning, but I didn't... Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll figure that out at some point, but you can follow us on Twitter, at WSumElmore. You can find us and follow us on Facebook, where some of these videos go up. Our reaction, you'll see the Fantasy Realms one, from yep. live from Canada, not live Ooh. now, but recorded in Canada. That'll be on there, and a few others. I'll be doing a couple more Why I Like videos that will go up in due course um but yeah subscribe press the bell icon leave a comment tell us what you're up to what games have you played and enjoyed what are you looking forward to you are you as excited about keyforge as i am <laughs> all right we will see you again next time that's all from us Bye. -bye. Bye.